Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about this $7 accessory that might be a better fit for you than a round head flash. My channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create these type of videos without the influence from any specific camera manufacturer. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a wide selection of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you're interested in any of the equipment discussed, you can find links to those in the description below. So the past year has been round madness when it comes to speed lights, Profoto kicked it off with the Profoto A1, a round head speed light or the world's smallest studio flash. And then Godox followed up with both the H200R, a round head for their popular Godox 8200, as well as a new round V1, a new round speed light. Now I've told you guys in pretty much every video that is discussing a round flash head, don't buy into the round hype strictly for quality of light, or at least not for softness of light, because it's still a really small light source, and no, it's not gonna be any softer than a traditional rectangle light. It does have a nice characteristic, a nice fall off, and specifically with the V1, a really nice pattern of light, how it falls off from light to dark is extremely impressive, but most people aren't using these speed lights bare, so you're gonna be modifying it anyways, which will influence your final quality of light based on the modifier. That being said, these little magnetic modifiers that are designed for the H200R and the V1 are awesome. Like they're really functional. Of course, we gotta pay homage to MagMod here because they're the ones that started this whole trend. Magnetic grids, magnetic gel holders, the sphere for throwing light in every direction, the grid, the barn door, bounce cards. They are all really, really helpful tools, especially for anyone who's using flash in an on the go nature where they're constantly bouncing light all around the room to accommodate the motion of their subjects. So first, I would say the biggest benefit to the V1 is this interface adjustment, what they did to change the interface of the device. But right after that would be the compatibility with these magnetic modifiers. Now, maybe you've already got four V860 version twos and you're thinking, uh, do I really wanna drop another $250 per flash to upgrade to these V1s just for the adaptability to these modifiers? Like maybe this interface change just isn't a big deal to you. They're not any more powerful. And the same goes for the H200R. Do you really wanna spend more money to have a new head just to acquire these magnetic modifiers? Well, you might not have to because of this, a $7 attachment called the Godox SR1, which can go onto the head of both the 8200 Fresnel head or any of their full-size speed lights like the V860 version 2, but also the TT600, TT685, and V850 version 2. And I guess the original V850 and V860 if you're still using those. It's an extremely simple device. It's an extremely simple device. Slides on over your V860 head, tightens down, and is quite secure. Like, if I really pull, it will come off, but it's not just gonna slide off on its own. Now, this gives you access to the entire AKR1 kit. You can use the grids, you can stack modifiers, you can do anything that you would do with the V1 by just adding this $7 attachment. And yes, it will fit on the Godox 8200 as well. So is it as good? Well, first off, I wanna say it does make your flash a little bit less portable. And by that, I don't mean that it's really that big, but it's just that it's an awkward size, specifically because this knob comes out so far. So it might not slide into the spot that you normally tuck a little flash in. You can see when compared to the round head of the V1, it just occupies a little bit more space. So. You're gonna have to think about that in terms of how you package these, which did affect me because I can stack two of these 8200s on top of each other in one little pocket compartment of my light stand bag. But once this is on there, that doesn't work anymore. The second thing, and the thing that's probably a bigger deal, is no, you're not going to get the exact same quality of light that you would get out of the V1 or H200R. Both the V1 and the H200R just have a really nice quality of light, a very smooth transition as they go from light to dark, and the V860 and the Fresnel head on the 8200, they just don't. So even though buying the SR1 does give you access to using all of these magnetic modifiers, you're still not gonna have the same quality of light because you don't really have the same starting point. You're never gonna get those really smooth light transitions that you get on the V1 and the H200R when you're using this standard Fresnel head. 
And that's gonna vary based on what type of modifier you're using. Like if you're bouncing your light after the fact, maybe using the bounce card or using the sphere, then you're not gonna have much of an issue and you're not gonna see much difference in the quality of light because by the time it bounces and scatters all over the room, you it's just not going to be discernible whether it came from a Fresnel head or the really nice bulb of the V1. But if you're using more direct light, like say a grid fired directly at your subject, well, that's where you're gonna see the hotter center of the Fresnel head instead of the really smooth light fall off pattern of the V1 or H200R. So to sum it up really quickly, yes, this little $7 attachment does give you access to these modifiers, but no, it does not magically turn them into a V1 or turn your 8200 Fresnel head into the H200R. One thing I will say though is I really appreciate Godox doing this SR1. From a business perspective, it would make much more sense to make all these cool new modifiers only compatible with their two newest portable lighting products, both the V1 and the H200R, because then if you wanted that convenience, you'd have to buy these flashes as well. But time and time again, that's just not how Godox operates. They always seem to create as many openings and compatibility as possible, constantly bringing out small accessories that allow older equipment to be used with newer equipment, which is exactly the case of this SR1. And I really like what that represents because it just allows people to get more use out of their products long term. So keep that up, Godox. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the SR1 accessory. You can find links to it in the description below, along with the AKR1 modifier kit that it's designed to be used with. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos, and until next time, keep on shooting.